cannot imagine settling down with a girl who's never been involved in any kind of adult entertainment. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense. Click the like. You can do it too. Maybe, I don't know whose side it's on. <laughs> click the like and subscribe. Uh, make sure you click the bell button so you get notified of all the new videos coming up. Um, we're going to be doing these regularly. we got a lot of cool topics in the pipeline. We, both of us bring a lot of raw, real shit to these conversations. That's why this is a good podcast series. We can make audio versions too and fucking throw these into podcasts. What's up everybody? John Anthony here. I got George G. Star on the call. Today we're going to go over strippers. Everybody's favorite topic. We got a bunch of cool shit to cover about strippers. Both of us have a lot of experience with these wonderful creatures. Hate them and love them at the same time. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you kick off... Uh, you're going to go over what the, the internal mindset of a stripper, the internal mentality. Yeah. I, I think first of all, uh, welcome guys. Great to see you again, man. It's with, our first video was epic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, lot, a lot of good feedback. Um, what I want to talk about is sort of the internal workings of let's start with what is the lead. So the lead we're going to be discussing is a stripper <laughs> and we're going to talk about what, where she came from as a human. And then how she got to the stripping, and then an end game that they all seem to have. So we, we'll go through. We'll go through an inception of the person, like beginning, middle, end. So first, she started as a little stripper sperm. <laughs> first, she was swimming around. No, so, so first, she actually started as a normal person. So this lasts. So, so this lasts. This lasts for about. 12 years to 13 years traditionally of their life. And guys, by the way, uh, much like John, I've been through, I would say in my lifetime, I would say I've been through about over 2,000 strippers, maybe 2,500, from all different parts of the earth, um, different nationalities, you name it. And, and this, of course, I want to make myself clear when I say stripper, I'm not talking about girls who do porn, and I'm not talking about escorts, and I'm not talking about webcam, and I'm not talking about other forms of just, just straight up working at working at strip clubs. Yeah, because this it's not applicable. What do you mean? What do you mean the the two thousand? You're talking about the ones you've met. Hung out with. Yeah. Experiences, it, things besides just sex. Yeah. Knowing them so well, so they start out. They start out essentially as just a normal person. Um, not always, <laughs> not always a troubled background. A lot of us might think. A lot of us might think that. They start with a troubled background. Daddy and issues? That, yeah, that, yeah. people would think that. They think maybe that they were like raped or something or some kind of like trouble. Not always. I actually have found that the situation was something like this. So they're basically just the standard average girl until about age 12. About age 12, 13, something traumatic happens in there. This is where we can in, like drop in. Uh, daddy issues. We could drop in a rape. We could drop in some sort of sexual assault. Some sort of basically, sort of, <laughs> yeah. They, they become damaged usually in some in some regard. Yeah. So they, they become damaged in some regard around this age, and then what they decide is in their head they have a they have two sides of their head. One side of their head is is of the brain is hating men. And which leads them to want to put attention strictly on themselves. The other side of the brain is ultimately still wanting something traditional. So you have like completely two ends of the spectrum. Because in one side they still don't want to give up, but on the other side they hate men. So it creates hybrid about what their end game and results will be as just in their lifetime. Um, then after that, since obviously to work at a strip club, what is it, I think it's like 18. Right. Yeah. Usually. Wait, wait. Real quick. What about what the mindset or the like? What What have you found with their self esteem? I found a lot of them have like real shit self esteem. Yeah. So they have really low self esteem. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Sorry, it's very obvious. But they have low self esteem due to the fact that a lot of them had these bad encounters or whatever the case was. A lot of them have. They have low self esteem. They uh, like I said, the dual parts of the brain. That's really really what it's based around. And then also usually. They don't want to. They, they want to be able to leverage their looks to be able to get uh, money and manipulate men. So it, it just leads back to what I was saying. Yeah. It just leads back to still there's an anger for men that's an underlying tone. There's yeah. an anger for men. You have to understand because that is the driving force 
behind a lot of it. Not that they're evil people or they're, they're necessarily out to get us, but something very traumatic happened with a man. Yeah. So they're, it's always in the back of your head. It's like if something happens to me or to you, right, it's going to stay in the back of our minds, whether we like it or not. You, you, never, you, you can overcome things, but there are underlying tones of it. And you'll, you'll remember it and you'll lean back on it sometimes. Yeah. So they had that. So they, they, they had these little odd jobs between like 12 <laughs> and 17. Maybe they worked at like a car wash. <laughs> like, you know, shit. It just really doesn't matter. <laughs> so when they age 17 and they're able to leave home, a lot of them leave home sooner than that, but they're able to leave home and kind of like venture out. Yeah. So now they're venturing out. They all start the same way. They all start with a restaurant. It always starts with <laughs> openness of a restaurant, Hooters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. They call those places like, uh, like the fucking for the pickup guys watching this, the game guys. They're they're basically like a hired gun, a girl that's hired for their beauty. And a lot of times at those restaurants where they like Hooters or like Twin Peaks or uh, what are the other fucking ones? What's the Irish one? Tilted Kilt. They're basically, yeah, they're like putting out cleavage, like little skirts, little fucking button down shit. It all starts with their brain telling themselves, uh, you know, this, is, this isn't too bad at all. And, and this is the mindset. It's all a slippery people, slope, though, too. Extremely. It's a, it's a tight roll. Yeah. Their mind is telling them, whoa, all I'm doing is showing a little bit of tits and ass for maximum. <laughs> I'm not doing anything wrong, though. So what happens is these are breeding grounds. For them to encounter other creatures such as themselves. So you, you've got this pool, like a cesspool, of all these chicks coming together with, yet again, one. If you, I know so many chicks from Hooters and stuff like that. Yeah. They hate the managers there, like as if they were talking about their dad. So if you actually notice that behavior trend, where does that come from? That leads back to daddy issues, and now you've got this guy who's telling them what to do at yeah. their job. But then there's an empowered pool of, let's say, 20 to 30 of them on deck at the same time, so it's really weird. So yeah. you've got, they're like back to fucking, it's almost like they're pimp, is the manager of Hooters. Yeah. Like it's just like, <laughs> I, always find, I always find it funny, the, the managers at those higher gun places, like the Hooters or Twin Peaks, it's usually some fucking loser dude that like didn't even go to college. And like you take him out of Hooters or whatever, and he's a fucking loser, and like no chick would ever go, be down with him. But he's fucking hot chicks at Hooters, because they all see him as like the fucking king. Yeah. Don't even get me started on that. Yeah, yeah. They're, the same, they're, the same, they're the same guy. Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing a job to support tail. Yeah. So, yeah. when they get to Hooters, they start talking and they make friends with the other Hooters. We're going to use Hooters. We'll stick with the Hooters as like the baseline. Dude, real, real quick though, like Twin Peaks, when I was in fucking, when I was living near Dallas, Twin Peaks started doing like these lingerie weeks and the chicks would literally be walking around the restaurant serving food and shit. Like in a thong and pasties, like it got that heavy duty, which is like practically yeah. naked. <laughs> right, so the, the, the whole point is it, the, that's a good point. They start, the brain starts to tell them, well, all I'm doing now is this. And I can make more money. I doing, can make more money. Yeah. So they start to talk to the other girls. The other girls are usually already escorting, they're already <laughs> working as strippers, and they start to plant seeds in their mind about how much more money they can make and how much. The grass is greener on the other side. Yep. They don't want to slave all day around like sweaty ass dudes watching football and eating wings. Now we can upgrade and we can basically pull leads, their lead sourcing out of a pool where they can get extract much more money. Yeah. And so that's, there's a side of it that makes them into like an uh, entertainer, movie star for some reason that I don't understand. Like <laughs> strippers, escorts do it too, and porn stars do it too. Just because you're a stripper doesn't make you into a fucking movie star. No one knows who you are. They need to stop doing that. That's one big, <laughs> big thing. Their ego explodes for some reason because they're a stripper. Well, now, well, now they're like full validated though. It's like they they think they're the shit. Like in their in their profession, like a lot of them start carrying this like fucking mega ego because in their profession they're like a fucking god. Yeah. And then when they go into the, the real world, they're like. Look at me, I'm a god. Look at me, like I'm, I'm the shit, you know. Like, and they want to have everybody respond like that all the time. Hundred percent. And so they, they usually exit the Hooters. The Hooters will last about a year, on, on what I've seen on average. <laughs> you want to? We should graph this out. Yeah, we should. The life cycle, the life cycle of a stripper: car wash, 
<laughs> Starts at the car wash. <laughs> and, and also what happens to <laughs> is they start encountering that the more they can sort of learn the social dynamics, we can loop it back to social dynamics of how men actually work. Yeah. They, they're in training. They're in training at Hooters to go to the, to the next level, which is the strip club. It's kind of like yeah. high school to college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Division one. Yeah. Dude, and, and then, yeah, and then, and then they actually, I mean, we don't even need to get into this in this video, but then a lot of them go from stripping to like full on being a hooker, like on the side. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, it's like they're passing go and not collecting the $200. Because <laughs> they're not even giving they're like, they're, Yeah, they're like, why would I just fucking get like ones on the stage and try to convince these guys to get a dance when I can just get paid to fuck them? Right. So when they're in the strip club, now they're at the strip club, a lot of them traditionally just start escorting right away. So they just start getting guys numbers. So that they can have sex with them and pull sugar daddies and upgrade their whole life. That's where the escorting is the breeding ground. Because now they're interacting with strippers. So now they've upgraded from yeah. you know, some of chicks who kind of know what they're doing. With men, so so, it's hit and miss. Like we're still in a restaurant to now I'm in a strip club with strictly. Yeah, that's that's an important that's an important point because a lot of their coworkers at the restaurant like aren't ready to be like fucking whores yet. Like exactly. Yeah, they're still contemplating it, but there's an epic battle going. There's, there's the movie 300 between do I want to take the leap from Hooters to Stripper because now I have to actually put my pussy on a stage. That, that's totally different than serving a guy some wings and some uh, quick, quick note, Quick note on the movie 300. When I hit 300 late count, May 2014, we had a bunch of my buddies came over dressed as Spartans. We watched the movie 300. Every soldier was a fallen hoe. Lady. Sorry. Everyone, everyone says I find them on Cersei's. Yeah. The big, the big black dude. <laughs> the one he walks on people's backs and then he has all the whores making out with each other. And then all you have to do to join his kingdom is bow to Xerxes. It's all your request. And then some people don't want to bow and shit. And he just slices their head open and shit like that. <laughs> it's cool. But yeah, so they're in the strip club. They start talking to other strippers. A lot of the other strippers usually have a, uh, a pimp or someone managing them. There's somebody behind that stripper collecting money. I would say. <laughs> That's about 65 to 70% of the time. Yeah, and some, I've, I've talked to a lot of them about this shit. And, like, sometimes they have, like, a dedicated pimp for the fucking club, the strip club. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying they've got that, and then they've got a personal one who's usually, like, their baby daddy or some kind of male figure that just never leaves, and they're giving money to. They're literally paying some fool's bills all the time. So, you know, <laughs> and, and these guys are low value, too. These guys are broke as fuck. And, like, it, it's I've seen it, and it's happened to me before where they're like, I'm I get to know them on a personal level. I usually never meet them at the club. And then they tell me, hey, like I want to be with you literally like organically, but I have to get rid of my pimp. I have to get rid of this dude that's taking money from me every time I go to work. Because it's some like 10 year old relationship. A lot of those guys have been with them through the Hooters space. They've been like, you know, <laughs> stalking and lurking and shit, waiting for them to go to the strip club and collect that, collect the money. <laughs> it's actually dangerous, and there's a good point to make in this video. A lot of you guys going out there, seriously, that go to strip clubs, be careful when you go home with a stripper if she offers that because you don't know if you're getting into a situation where I've seen it happen to people where these guys are like just waiting and they fucking burst your door in, put a fucking gun to your head, and take all your shit and your credit card and break you go to the ATM. Like on some real shit. This is what a lot of strippers, they, they're going down this road. And you're just a fucking trick to them. You have to be careful that when yeah. they say all oh, it's here or there, that you're taking safety precautions because there's always like seventy percent of the time I said there's a guy behind the stripper. Yeah. She's not by herself on this earth. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can see and they are. I know a lot of ones who were and who are and shit like that, but a lot of the time they're not. So if they're not, you have to be careful. Yeah, I've I never tracked the total amount of strippers, but I, I would estimate from like rough calculations it's about thirty. Bank that I banged, and I only ran into the fucking pimp thing once, and that was one that I had made like a girlfriend. We had like this big falling out and shit, and she had never mentioned this pimp thing, and then like. It's only it's only one you know about. I'm not so like. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 of course yeah. I'm just saying I never had a, I never like had to like, I never had a situation where where they were either talking about it or where where I had to like have a problem with that. I mean. Trying to be honest with me, which I appreciate. They're like, "Hey, let me get rid of this guy, whatever." But a lot of the time, for 
you guys watching out there how you can tell if she does have a pimp, just ask her about her tattoos. Usually, if the name's already on her body, I swear to God, 100% <laughs> Guys watching, drop a comment on this video and let me know what you find. Because I would say almost every single time, if you've asked them about their tattoos, there's, you're going to see a guy's name. So or or it's her fucking uh, baby daddy. Yeah, like I make girls tattoo my name just because I'm possessive and I'm an asshole. <laughs> but these guys do it because it's basically to put a warning signal out there like this is the property of some other guy. It's like, well, I do it as a property like possessive thing. They're doing it as a pimp thing. Yeah. It's just act. So, so you always have to know that there's another male present so you can address the leak properly and know what you're doing. Let's, yeah, let's, let's move into... Um, like the pros and cons. All right, so we both have dated lots of strippers. We've lived with strippers, fucked strippers that we didn't date, but we know the, the pros and cons. Okay, so for, I'll go first. For, for me personally, the pros are like, they're like more adventurous in bed, like more sexually open. They're just like realer, like down to earth. They're fucking usually like pretty cool chicks. They're a lot like myself. Like they're just kind of like, I don't give a fuck, like YOLO. Like living life to the fullest, you know, they're spontaneous, they're fucking crazy. But I, all that shit's cool, like that's all attractive. I like the, my like stupid technical term is like spontaneous emotional volatility where like you have these really high highs, really low lows and it's like all over the fucking place. Whereas you give me, like, like one of the girlfriends I had, this is back like eight years ago, she was doing a MD PhD program at UPenn. She was doing CrossFit, had like a little puppy. I'm already falling asleep. <laughs> And she was like, she didn't eat gluten and shit. And like, yeah. it was boring yeah. as fuck. It was just, it was like, bo but like she was hot and she was going to be like really successful. She was smart. And like everything on paper was perfect, but I was like bored to death. And then you give me like a fucking little 21 year old, like broken stripper. And I like fall in love. Yeah, here, here's, here's what happens. I have two theories in life. One theory, you put a room full of the hottest brunettes on planet earth. I don't care who they are. A platinum blonde walks in and it's all over. Yeah. Second theory is, <laughs> no matter who you are, who you're married to, you're a great guy, you're a terrible guy, you're the best guy, you're whoever the fuck you are, nobody is not susceptible to the power of an adult entertainer. Period. <laughs> our president, Donald Trump. That includes Donald Trump. Stormy Look Daniels. At Look at the resume, dude. Anybody's open, wide open to it. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Because us as men, the primal creatures that we are, their aesthetics and their what they are is they're professionals and catering to men. Yeah. So no matter how good you are, like a game like me or yourself, we still go to our primal instinct of wanting that perfect chick. Yeah. And they know how to present that better than anybody. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so they have all that cool shit going. A lot of them are bisexual. So like, I, I lived with a stripper in Miami, a stripper in San Diego, and a, a stripper in New York. And it always ended fucking horribly, but it, it was like awesome. The ride was awesome. Like just like huge fucking fights and like super passionate sex, like all these adventures, lots of threesomes and foursomes, you know, just fucking, I don't know. It, yeah, like, I, I guess the cons are like, usually they're fucking like, it goes back to that like brokenness that whatever happened in the past, like one of them, when I broke up with her, she like tried to kill herself. Uh, that, that's, 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 that's about average. Huh? They usually, they usually do that. You know. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna look like assholes fucking laughing about that. I mean, it, you know, she did that like, like I wasn't even there to like stop her. You know, you know the, the thing is, is like they have like this super deep rooted, they can be like hot chicks that are presenting like tons of charisma and tons of extroversion. But like deep down, they're like, they, they think they're like the ugliest girl in the whole world. And they, they go and get their little validation at the club and stuff. And then also, also deep down there, there are people who want something traditional. They, they might not be capable of it. And I think a lot of guys don't understand that. They might not be capable of that, but internally they do want that. What I've found yeah. with strippers is I've actually haven't had as many crazy stories. I've had really good experiences that I wasn't ready for. So like I had, there were a couple uh, I have some good stories we're gonna get into later, but I'm trying to keep it pretty technical, not too personalized, you know. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to be with it. Technically speaking, if you're ready for a real relationship, they're some of the best chicks that you could have because they have a level of hardship that they've been through. 
they have the aesthetics and the looks, and the more than that they have it, they know how to upkeep it. What I find is a problem with uh, regular girls, I would, let's say if I go to a bank, such as Wells Fargo, and the, I've, I've done this before, like they always hire hot chicks, the manager's hot, whatever, I fucked a lot of bank managers, regular <laughs> chicks like that. We don't connect up here, actually, because uh, they're not, they haven't been through enough hardships, they're just kind of nine to fiving it, and uh, I just, I don't find it attractive. With a stripper, when we meet, there's like a synergy there that we automatically understand each other, so it's very real, and no one's putting on as much of a production. Yeah. So for example, like for me, like a, let's say, let's take this place I'm in now, it's a beautiful, amazing penthouse and stuff like that. You bring a girl from a nine to five job, she starts taking pictures, she starts making the situation uncomfortable, she's snapping it, she's telling her friends about it, and she's leveraging, which I find to be really annoying. She starts, she a, starts talking about doing spells. <laughs> <laughs> Zero calibration though. When I take a stripper or an adult <laughs> entertainer and I bring her to a place like this, yeah. oh nice, they don't even react because they're yeah. so used to it, calibrated to that high-end lifestyle. And as well, they've come from a place of hardship so they respect money a little bit more. Yeah. And when they're being real with you, the strippers I've been lucky enough to know have been very real with me. I'm not spending money on them like that, like if at all. They're really actually doing it. The strippers have been the most generous ones to me. I had a yeah. stripper I was seeing. She's a fucking, at least a nine and a half, solid bitch. Super hot from Miami. She used to call me all the time, and she knew I had plenty of money. And she just wanted to do it because she wanted to do it. And she's like, hey, like I'm at the Chanel store. Do you want any shoes or anything? Like yeah. she's walking around with six, seven thousand from the night before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah when, I lived, when I lived, you're in Vegas now. When I, when I lived in Vegas 2013, um, when I left, when I left and moved to San Diego, I had about nine chicks in rotation or so. Four of them were strippers. The one from Spearmint Rhino, she was a little bit older. She was she was a Playboy centerfold in her twenties. But she, when I was dating her, she was like forty. But she had like still she had the fake tits. She was Russian. She had the fake tits, they tan, good. blonde. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. The only the only bad part was like the face a little bit looked a little old, but the, the body was like super on point. She ate really good, and she had like a fucking culinary degree. So she could cook, she cooked feasts and stuff for like all these like higher end people and stuff. But yeah. she was working like the day shift and I would basically, she'd get off at like eight. I'd roll in there at like 8.30 a bunch of nights. She'd, we'd, she'd have like super nice champagne. We'd go out on her balcony and we'd talk like intellectual shit. She was like a smart chick, like super down to earth. Have all this nice champagne. She'd like chain smoke cigarettes with her talking her Russian accent and then, uh, bang her out and then I would be like on the couch fucking relaxing and she would make like a three multi-course meal or whatever no, Eat, I, dude, I, I, adult entertainers are my favorite type of people period yeah, she, I can't, she fucking cooked Thanksgiving for me and like 15 friends that year <laughs> I, I cannot imagine settling down with a girl who's never been involved in any kind of adult entertainment <laughs> That's a good. I'm gonna have my. I'm gonna have my editor put it. Put that as the the upfront tagline, like, because he always puts like these like one liners, like the start of the video. I've never. I've never thought about settling down with a girl that's never been involved with adult entertainment. <laughs> Do you know that my, my only serious relationships, for example, I've ever had have been with girls in adult entertainment. It's no, dude. I, I like. I was just thinking in my head. I was. I was okay. I lived with those three I mentioned. I I lived with those girls. They're all true. And it, we won't even talk about this video, but two of them I turned into strippers, which which I regret. But I'll go, yeah. I'll go, I'll go a tiny bit of that really fast. Like, like basically, those chicks were like hot chicks that, you know, they're both like twenty one, that kind of were like wanting to, you know, be someone or whatever. And that was like an easy. They're like, do you mind if I, I, w I would like take. I took both of them to strip clubs, and they like kind of liked it. And then I, I convinced both of them to get up there on the pole while we were at the club and on separate occasions, obviously. And then uh, the managers were both like, oh, you're hired, you're hired. And then, but like you said, like then they're around all these fucking hookers. There's a lot of like drug use in the clubs. I think one that's, of, that's, what, that's the dark side. I think one of them started doing coke behind my back. Yeah, you're, I would go pick her up in Miami, like 8 a.m. she'd get let out. And, and uh, all the strippers are like stumbling around like, like that as they're coming out of the club, you know? Ultimately, if your game is good enough and your social dynamics are good enough, you can tell a stripper what you want, yeah. and they'll do and they'll do as told, and it'll be over if you want it to be over. The only thing that I think morally is a little bit unjust about doing that is that you guys out there have to know if you do want to date a stripper, it's not fair, in my opinion. I'm gonna stand up for strippers here a little bit. It's not fair. I don't like when dudes come along to a stripper and then tell them to quit 
started stripping because they're super insecure beta males. And then she stops and then she says, hey, I need my hair done. And you're like, hey, I don't have the money. I'm broke. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> don't ask. Don't don't ask for something that you can't handle either. Yeah. Like these girls have to look. They want to keep up their looks. So because that's all they have, you know, they're they're, they're broken people. All they have left is their look. You know, they have their looks and they have a little bit of whatever they wanted when they wanted to be like Princess Diana or some shit when they were three. Other than that, there's not a whole lot there. So to me, I find it mean. Why, why take away the one thing that they have left, which is their ability to make money in their sex? Yeah. Why would you, why would you fuck with them? That just means to do to any human on yeah. a serious level. But like, is that, I see a lot of guys do that and they try to use a little bit of game, but then when the girl, I don't find it to be like tricking off or anything. It's like the girl just quit her whole income stream. All she was asking you for was like some money to do her fucking hair. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Like you gotta be. Like if, it's like if you want to drive a Rolls Royce, you pay the maintenance on a Rolls Royce. Yeah. You can't let it fall apart and say, "Damn, I want the prices of a Honda." You yeah. can't have it all, dude. So yeah. no matter how good your game is, your social dynamic ability, you want them to stop stripping, they'll be loyal to you. Yeah. All, I've never had a stripper be disloyal to me. Yeah. Pause. But at the same time, <laughs> I've never actually said, "Hey, stop stripping." I've Are seen I've stripping? seen them be disloyal to others a lot of times. Like when I was living in Lisbon, Portugal, uh, at the end of. 2017, I had a, she was half Japanese, half Brazilian stripper, and she had two Brazilian roommates, two full Brazilian roommates, and her, her two roommates would join us all the time for sexual shit, but they both had boyfriends in other countries, but I, I've seen them fuck around on dudes like crazy all the time, you know, because the ethics goes out the window too in that, in those places. Right, but, but, but here's where the social dynamics and game lasts in. If you're the man, they're going to be cool, they're going to, you know, be in line most of the time. Yeah. They will stop. They will stop. There's no, there's no denial in my mind about when they find the guy that they consider to be the guy that they actually want to be with. <laughs> they do stop because I, I made them all do it, and they always do it, and I've had zero problems. I actually can stop stripping. I, I never said stop stripping. They asked me, and I agree. So most of the times, I never. I usually don't meet them at the strip club. I just meet them. I attract them. Like we're each other's type, so you know how you can attract a type usually. Yeah. Like let's say your type was was blonde, so you find yourself always attracted to blonde. So I always attract adult entertainment type of chicks, and like. Yeah, we both we could have even expanded this. We both have dated like porn stars and fucking uh, what's yeah. the other one? Webcam chicks. Webcam chicks, and, and what I find is it's so real, such a real relationship. Yeah. From the beginning, that when they come to me and they're like, "Hey, um, I don't want to keep shipping anymore because I just want to be with you," and I don't want to. I didn't even bring it up, boss. Yeah. They're bringing it up. And, I, and they say, what do you think? I'm like, I want you to do what you're comfortable with. If that's what you want to do, go ahead and stop. I'm like, because it's really up to you because they're getting uncomfortable with it and they're getting like low energy yeah. to even make it more money because they're so into me that yeah. they're like, fuck, I don't even... It's like, it's not me saying shit. I'm so... I, I could care less. They can strip forever. Though. All the guys in the <laughs> club, I don't give a I don't give a shit. I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah. I don't care. It's like... I'm going to work. That's a great opportunity for me to continue the rest of my sets. I'm not trying to not talk to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With a lot of them, like, they would go to work and I'd bang other chicks. And then, like, they're texting me from work the whole time. Like, babe, I'm, I'm bored. I miss you. Like, all this shit, you know. It's the best possible scenario for us as men. Seriously, if you could possibly. What else do you want? Yeah. The only problem is, the only problem is that if they're on any kind of drug <laughs> that's serious, that changes the game a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make sure because the drug use in the strip clubs like hella high. Yeah. You have to make sure that they're not into too much blow, too much Xanax, you know, mixing it, whatever they're doing in there, and then they bring that into <laughs> shit your house. Yeah. So you got you got to really monitor them a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and they're and they're meeting shady people too. I mean, as a little fucking like you know dark side of of this to mention, you know, there's a lot of fucking shady people that are hanging out in those places. Not to be like, oh, like, you be careful there, young man. But I, I've heard some bad shit. Like, my dad, one of his close friends, the dude was, like, super loaded rich and was, like, about to retire. He had, like, worked hard, built his business up. He had just sold it. And he was, like, fucking around one of the strippers. And her drug dealer was, like, into her and got pissed off. Fucking shot him in the head in the parking lot, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's because it's not so much them doing it. It's just what they've been involved with for the longest time. Yeah. So what is part of their life is like having 
some little coke dealer around the pimp, you know, a couple <laughs> bad people. Yeah. This guy's fucking cooking bad, whatever the fuck they're doing. <laughs> it just comes with the territory. But as far as like actual humans and who I'd want to settle down with, I just find that we, you're hitting like everything that I like. You, yeah. you have these. You have the aesthetics of Barbie, you have the coolness yeah. of all the dude. I almost feel like I'm hanging out with one of my friends yeah. because they're so cool and real with it. They're, like the cool thing about a stripper is they're, they're so confident in their look. And I, I like the ones who are really skinny that eat whatever they want. Yeah. So like I used to date this chick in Miami, one of the oldest ones. It's a good story. Her name's Darla. She works at 11 now. She was working that's at her my, That's where my chick worked. 24 hours, it's 24 hours for those of you that are watching. Kind of a rite of passage. And it, dude, and it's and it's fucking, it's it's like re- that, their standards for hiring are really really high. Like, my chick, yeah. I, I went with her for the interview, and they're like, they had her dance up there, and within like 15 seconds, they're like, you're hired, and they're like, listen, and I was right there. They're like, listen, uh, we haven't hired a girl in two months. They're like, girls are like coming through here all day long. They're like, this girl, it's like one exactly what you talked about. She had like five percent body fat, ate junk food all the time, never been in a gym. And she had, she was half, uh, half Mexican, half Pacific Islander, and had like tattoos, weighed about a hundred pounds. Yeah. Oh man, stop it! I'm getting a freaking erection over here. Check, check, check this out. Check this out. So let, let, let me explain. This one's even better. So I'm gonna explain Darla's because Darla, Darla's decently well known now for being down there. So I met Darla before she full blown started stripping. So she's from West Virginia. And then she came down to Miami. Did you meet her in the yeah. Hooters phase or the car wash phase? <laughs> I met her better than that. I think she was working at like just some like bar thing. It was some like no name shit. Yeah. And so I met her, whatever. This is before she had the surgery. She was still, she, honestly, she's one of the few strippers that was really that beautiful. What like, surgery? What, did she get tits or what? She had her tits done, her nose done, her lips. Um, a lot more extensions. A lot, of them, a lot of them in Miami get the asses too. No. It makes him look like a transsexual. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so so she was from West Virginia. She's just a white chick. She's like a, a very plain, pretty white chick. Yeah. Not, nothing, no Spanish or that. And then skinny, like she's like five three, maybe like a hundred five pounds. Some shit. Yeah, so it's the same shit as my as the chick I was dating. Yeah. Super super sexy, super fun, high energy, and so cool. Like she was literally like. My friend thinks you're hot. Do you want to just fuck her and like get it over? With? And all her friends were strippers and this and that. Yeah. And I was like, sure, why not? And she didn't hold it against me at all. She's like, you're a dude. Like, she's like, you don't have an emotional connection. See, they, their their emotional intellect is high. Actually, yeah. no, they know a lot. Yeah. More than we're thinking that they know. They know a lot. Strippers are very intuitive. So she's like, <laughs> I know, I know you don't have any emotional connection to her. If you want to fuck her, just do it. Like, who cares? She's like, we can have a threesome. You can fuck her by yourself. I'll give a fuck. Yeah. I, that was so cool. So I fucked all our friends, there were about 10 of them. Yeah. And then when I still with it, I still loved Darla. I was like, Darla's so dope, and I would always go back to Darla. And then what I would do is I would stack them. So like other strippers, Darla wasn't a stripper yet, and then she became a stripper at Scarlet's. And then one night I was out. So this was a turning point in this little relationship. So one night I was out, and I think I was at Cameo, and we had a whole section, bottles and all that shit. Darla's like, I want to come see you. I said, okay. The club was, it was already like three. The club was going to close at four. I said, late, you can come if you want. Check. I'm with my friend named Bunny. Like, who the fuck? <laughs> you, you're really named Bunny? You're thinking like... Bunny range? Never, yeah, <laughs> nothing. You're not thinking this chick's going to be a 10. I don't know why. I'm like, I'm like, no, what's your real name? She's like, Bunny is her real name. I'm like, oh man, it has to be a stripper. You know, <laughs> I'm like, there's no way, dude. So fucking, they show up. So, so pause. Darla's a brunette. So, you know, like, like let's say in an over-under sports betting, like, she's like, you know, like, <laughs> minus 200. Like, uh, <laughs> like, like, you're still not a blonde. So, <laughs> they walk in, and I look to my right, and I see Darla, and then I see Bunny. Bunny's this about 5'10", platinum blonde, huge monsters, fake tits, tiny weight, like this big, but like, doesn't look like even too much surgery. She was fucking 19 years old. Damn. I'm like, she's, she was from the Bay, or she's from San Francisco. I was like, is Darla stupid? Or is this like just a setup? Cause yeah. this is just too stupid. I mean, this makes no sense. Like you obviously want me to hit on your friend or whatever. So it ends up that we're there in the section, we go to leave, we all get in the car, Darla gets out of the car, and Bunny's like, hey, I want to have sex with you. I'm like, okay, she's like, but alone, not with Darla. 
See, strippers are bitches. They take what they want. They don't give a shit about their friends. They don't give a shit about any of that shit. Like a normal well, they're, girl with they're, con- they're conditioned, like, like my chick that worked at 11, she said there'd be like 100 chicks working on a given night. You know, and who knows how many, like, there might not even be that many clients, potential clients in there. And there's 100 fucking chicks, and they're all, like, cutthroat, like, all trapped, because it's, it's money. So they're all, they're all, like, they're all, like, being rude to each other and shit. And you got all these fucking chicks from South America that, that are, like... Look, 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 look how cool this was. So, like, Darlick was back in the car, and then we, I just lied and said, yeah, I'll, like, I'll leave you here. Bunny has to go home as much as you want the same way as my friend who lives in North Miami Beach. All these lies. I came up with, like, 20 lies back to back. It was pretty cool. So after I, I was done lying, she actually bought it, and I got her an Uber. I was like, fuck it, what's $10 to, like, have the grand night of my life here? Nothing. Fucking paid a stupid Uber, she went home, whatever, who cares? Now we drop off my friend, I'm alone with Bunny. So I take Bunny back to my condo. We have, like, awesome sex, whatever. She's so fucking hot. I'm like, do you want to eat? Because by this time, it was already, like, probably 6.30 to 7 in the morning. Yeah. And she's like, well, like, you're expecting. See, this is where normal guys go wrong. This is how you know where you stand with them. When a stripper or adult entertainer asks you for something expensive and doesn't know you, they don't respect you. So if she there and she was, it was 7 in the morning, she's like, let's go get brunch, I would know that I would never be able to talk to her ever again. So I said, what do you want to eat? She's like, well, we can go get McDonald's or no, shit, can I just order pizza that's like only 7 bucks? And I was like, man, she's really fucking with me. We're, we're going to do this shit for real. I already knew. Because they have this little game they play. When they meet you and they think you're lower level than them in a trick, they basically go into auto demand. They're like, I want to have brunch for $300. I want to have shoes for none. And there's just like stacks. And most guys fall into that because they're just seeing you as dollar signs. Yep. So that's emotional. So when she said the pizza thing and she felt like she was almost putting me out of my way, it was like my heart melted and I became the guy from Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> So after, after that, I was like, wow. And then I seriously like, fell in love with Bunny and Darla at the same time. I ended up going back with Darla just because she was the original. Yeah. But man, like, it was another great, like, I've had nothing but great experiences. I just know their backgrounds really, really well. Yeah. So that's where I can just auto-decode exactly what they're on. And if you know them well enough, you can make any stripper your girlfriend. That's the point. But just make sure that they're talking to you for the right reasons and the way you do it is by doing what I like to call pocket checking them. So just like the breakfast thing, that was me offering. Like, hey, like where would you like to go? Like leave the ball on your court and let's see the response. According to the response, I'll know where I stand. Because yeah. they're, they're so socially dynamic and tuned with our brain that they know what they're doing. So they would never disrespect someone they really wanted to have a long-term relationship with or possibly even see multiple times again yeah. and suggest something expensive. There's a, there's that extreme case though where even if they really like you, they're just so conditioned to want shit because everyone else is giving up. Like this one that I banged, I mean, it's rare, but like this well, one example I think of, it was this blonde uh, fake titty one in Vegas and she told me this whole story after I banged her, how she fucked Leonardo DiCaprio like two years before and like she's just, she was like just giving off like, oh, I banged this athlete, this celebrity, the blah, 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 you know. And these guys are all just throwing money around because they don't give a shit. And so she's like, oh, I think we should go like to this nice place to eat or whatever. And I was like, listen, like, you know, if you want to fucking hang out, we can do that kind of shit. Don't treat me like one of your fucking dudes that comes in the strip club or whatever. And then that like kind of put her off a little bit. Like usually that sets them straight. But like with some of them, like if you put them, if you put them like with that boundary check, they're going to just. See, see, my point is I don't do a boundary check. All I do is I do the I put the ball in their court and just listen for the response. I'm 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 reactive, not active. I'm just reacting. So no. so if you say oh I'm hungry, and I say okay, well what are you thinking? I put the ball back in your court. I'm not suggesting anything. Yeah. So you can say you have lots of options, and if you pick one that's expensive, my brain auto dials into this girl's on the wrong page. Delete. Yeah. Or it's anything else. So that 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 is something critical to know in game. Critical to know if you want to date a stripper because I, I do feel like the ultimate high for a man is to date some sort of adult entertainer. I mean, come on, even as kids, what do we? Did as Barbie and Ken, like these little things that you see in your head, Playboy magazine, like come on. Yeah, a lot of times it turns into really fun shit too. Like, like another really, really quick story. There was this chick 
I was like at a dubstep event back when dubstep was popular, like 2010 or some shit, 2011. And there was this like super hot chick that came on towards the end and was dancing on the stage. And all the chicks fucking are dancing up there. And she's got like these little tiny short. There's a white chick who's blonde, but she's got these little tiny shorts with this big fat ass, like with really nice, not like actual like gross fat, like just like nice, plump, perfect ass. And it says, enjoy the ride on the shorts. And all these people were like fucking pointing and staring. It was like fucking out of control. I, and I was like making out with some chick in the crowd, but I was just like, holy shit, just like staring at this ass. I went on the Facebook event page, found her on Facebook. Turns out she had a boyfriend, but convinced her, she lived like two hours outside of Philly, like in Baltimore. Convinced her to come to Philly, ended up banging her, she's like 20 years old. And then turns out like she's a stripper in uh, Baltimore. And I'm like, why don't you fucking strip here at the, at the best strip club in Philly? So we take her in there, she gets hired there. She starts coming up every weekend. And we weren't boyfriend girlfriend, but I would I would just bang other chicks while she was at work, and then she would stay the night, bang her out that night and morning. We started like the sex was so good, we we bought a, a camcorder and started fucking filming all our shit, and then uh, yeah, like, huh? and, yeah and then we were like I had this giant TV at that apartment, and we would like she was, she was one of those girls that, like comes real easily, and then we would play the shit on the on the big TV like while we were fucking, not like like uh, streaming there it was like from other sessions. And she bought these outfits and stuff. And then that was like, it was, she just naturally transitioned into becoming a porn star in LA. And now she's like a really famous porn star. But, and it's fucking gross to, to see her like getting triple teamed and shit. But, you know, then they go way over the top. It's like they, they, they like sit in the middle of like 40 dudes to get through and shit. Yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah, it's gross. Yeah, um, but, hey, but you know what though? And here, here's, the, here's the dividing line. We'll do, it'll be a separate day, a separate video. But the dividing line is, you know what? If I have kids with a stripper, <laughs> no one, no one looks down on it. I don't feel anymore. It's getting too widely accepted. But when you have kids with a porn star, and you can go on Google and see the girl getting jizzed on, like a, a load getting dumped on her face, no matter yeah. who you are, it's just a different level of social status than it is to date a stripper. A stripper's like saying, "Yeah, she worked at Hooters." It's kind of like overlooked and shit. Yeah. People might make cool jokes. It's kind of overlooked. But when you start down the lane of porn. And it's never going off the internet. Like you're never gonna get rid of that content. Yeah. And the content's usually owned by the porn company. Fuck, man. Yeah. I mean, then it becomes then it becomes a, a never-ending joke. No yeah. Whether whether or not. But that so, that ties back in though with the slippery slope shit. I mean, you know, we're, here we are. Here she was already okay with stripping. Here we are, like filming all this shit. And then she's like, oh, and she was dumb as like my friends all call her the brick. Like she, her brain was just like. <laughs> It's like it was like painful to to hang around her. And it was cool. Yeah, that's the thing. We're so in, we're so enticed we're so enticed by their look. Yeah. That we find ourselves overshadowing. Like imagine here, John, take this in your head. Just listen, listen up. Imagine you had a, another girl. This is what I the game I like. This is the kind of shit I think about. Imagine you had another girl, right? Yeah. And she had the look of a normal girl, but she was acting like your stripper. I don't think you talk to her for more than two hours in life. But the fact that she's a hot stripper, you're going to make, we, I do the same thing. We make micro excuses. Uh, she's, she's learning. I mean, we, 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 we would revert back to a kindergarten and shit. Like, write your name on the board. Let's see who gets here first. Like, we do all these little games yeah. because we seriously don't understand that our brain's just overriding shit we know we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> your brain's on a complete override mode. It's just like a car engine, and the light, the light is on, and you just put a piece of black tape over the light, and just say, fuck it, it's not on, fuck it. Yeah. It's the same shit. But I, if it was a normal girl saying the same shit, if a normal chick, now you're down to like a four, but she's saying the things that the stripper's saying, you would get rid of her the next day. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, it's like that even to some degree with all hot girls. <laughs> the stripper has the extra appeal, the, the, you know, the whole like bad bad girl kind of shit. But yeah, like, yeah, with all hot girls, you put up with all kinds of shit. <laughs> it's it's the difference between as men, we literally want to drive Ferraris and exotic cars. Yeah. When we when we pick mates. No one ultimately wants to be stuck <laughs> drive a uh, Ford Fusion. You know? <laughs> ultimately. That's why, that's why the married dudes sneak away to the strip club. 
It's an outlet. Right, right. But here's the thing. How depressing, and I, I would never know, but I mean, how depressing is it that guys who are married, you have this wife, and she's just like this basic bitch, <laughs> and then, you, and then you, you find yourself in the strip club being that guy. My, my journey in my social dynamics program yeah. is that, and part of mastering life to never end up being that guy. Never uh, be the unhappy guy at any cost. You know, like never be the guy that 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 missed the mark. Never be the guy that marries below what he knows his capacity could have been. Yeah. Just settle because you're being a lazy piece of shit. And this is what I talk about in my videos. Guys out there, if you're not following me on Instagram, G Star, the number four real best thing you'll do with your life. Because I talk about this every morning. It is disgraceful and shame, shame to you if you're a guy out there who settled for a fucking four or five and you knew you could have done better, but you never wanted to take the time to learn. You didn't want to take the hits. I, I, before I mastered this, I failed millions of times. Millions. So what? But these guys can't say, oh, one girl says, oh, you're a fatso, and they go and cry in the corner and never try again. You know, and that's part of social dynamics and game. Yeah. Never sell yourself short for the ultimate hot chick that you know you could have. I know that I can marry and retain a 10, no problem. I know it. Yeah. It's just a question of what I want it to happen because of the rest of my lifestyle is, takes a lot, you know? So I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm in the prime position right now for a relationship. Yep. Uh, but <laughs> for the guys out there that are watching, don't ever sell yourself short, man, seriously. Yeah. Like, we all have what it takes. There's nothing special here between me and John and you and the next guy watching. We are made up of the same genetic code. You have the ability to do whatever you want. Looks don't matter. I swear to God, they don't. It doesn't help retention either. I know some of the most hottest, loyal chicks that are married to some fat slob of a dude, but something about him inspires them and they're not gonna cheat. If your game and your social dynamics and the rest of your stuff is strong enough, they won't do it. So don't sell yourself short for a five <laughs> because you're gonna end up cheating you're going to end up depressed. You're going to end up being the guy at the strip club telling the stripper how unhappy you are as a wife with a stupid little ring on. Come on, man. Yep. Or men. Are we men or are we women? Like, what's going on? Yep. Enough with the funny shit, you know? You mm. got to aim high. Aim high. That's my, my, my life motto, my rule. Aim fucking high. Like when someone says to me, uh, like, a, who's your favorite celebrity chick? I don't consider any of them celebrity. I consider them just, it's like saying... Who's your favorite chick at the mall right now? I don't know. <laughs> Whoever the fuck's hot. Who gives a shit about the rest? Who are you? You don't you're, you're no different than anybody. You're gonna get treated in the same formula that everybody else does. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. There's not even really that many hot celebrities, to be honest. There's not. Remember I was asking the other day. We didn't even couldn't come up with one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You mean Chris, we were like all we we're all drawn blanks. Because the thing is, you could fucking go into the local strip club and pick out a hotter chick than all the celebrities. And, and it's not just that, but I want to know the mentality. I'm, I'm more into a girl's mentality than her looks. I can have any hot chick I want. I want to know how you're going to treat me and what your mentality is. Dude, like I told you, man, like I tell a lot of girls about, or they see my YouTube or whatever, and they see that I know social dynamics and game and how to pick them up. And I say, wouldn't you rather have a guy like me? Who, I don't get phased by women one, one way or the other. If a girl tells me I'm hot and I'm at fucking McDonald's, I don't go, oh my God, I gotta go run and get her number. I don't care. And if I'm, if I'm at somewhere and there's a girl in fucking Starbucks and she's a stripper, I still don't care. Because I'm numb to knowing enough females to know. Yeah. Wouldn't you rather have a guy like that than some guy who's only fucked maybe two or three girls in his whole life, he fucking goes down to fucking 7-Eleven to buy peanuts, the chick behind the counter is cute, he cheats on you, fucking throws that shit away because he, he wants to experience a different flavor. So I think what we're doing here, not only as men, but in, in the videos and in the content and in the brand that I have and that you have, <clears throat> is teaching men, don't sell yourself short. Don't sell, ever sell yourself short. Because just like me and you were talking about, I, I feel like there's people who are gonna watch us and say, Oh, but these guys know so much about how to do that. And that's why they're able to. Anybody can learn this. Yeah. I used to strike out routinely. I was a fucking loser until I was 17, almost 18 years old. I didn't even know who I was. It's like PTSD. Like, you know, when people ask me now what happened, like, I have to think about it because my brain auto blocks it from trauma. Yeah. So 
if me, and I know your story too, are able to do it, baby, you can do it, baby. It's what you want to do. Do you want to learn a skill set so you can literally pull the hottest chicks in the world and fucking be the man? Or do you want to watch everybody else win? Watch me and watch John win, sit back on the <laughs> sidelines while you're fucking a four. Maybe. And the four, by the way, you're taking her to dinner. She's fucking costing you money, treating you like shit, and probably coming over to suck my dick later on that night. Yeah. And she's on Tinder. What? You need to learn this shit. It's serious. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I feel like I just gave a fucking speech from Putin. From what? That's true. <laughs> a speech from what? From Vladimir Putin. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was my male empowerment speech for the day. That mm. is, like, seriously what this whole shit always boils down to me about that. Strippers are not an untouchable, retainable character. You can get them how you want, but you must learn game. You must learn social dynamics. You must learn that. So you have a baseline to work with or you won't know what the fuck is going on. These videos that we're putting out like this are so critical for people to learn and learn not only social dynamics, but a lot of the stuff you even teach in your system about the basics so you can get to that level. And a lot of guys are like, oh, I don't want to go fuck a three or a four. Like, I don't want to build up. I, like, I want to go fuck a stripper. Now, I have a friend who gets zero chicks and will, like, go somewhere and there's, like, chicks that are hot that I want to fuck. And he's like, oh, girl, like, her hair is kind of too short. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. You don't fuck anybody. Who are you to tell her? <laughs> you don't fuck anybody. Yeah. What are you talking about? The guys who get the least amount of pussy and the least amount of girl attention are the most picky. Yeah. Like, what is up with that? You know what I mean? No, I, no, I hate, I, yeah, I know guys like that. It's, that's fucking stupid. When, when the girl's, like, super hot and, like, a hundred guys out of a hundred would say she's super hot, and they're like, no, she's a six. They're just trying to be cool. It's either they're cool or they're half homosexual. There's definitely <laughs> something wrong with their sex drive too low. Dude, I have, I have fucked some of the most beautiful women in the world, and I have fucked girls that are a three. <laughs> but the ones on the three, I'm just practicing on. I'll do something cool and new in that time. Maybe I'll come in their face, see how they react. Maybe I'll... I'll Maybe I'll, I'll do something that I traditionally wouldn't do because I know that I want to try it and leverage for my hotter leads. Yeah. You have to do that. So, like, I know and I'll test the waters. It's about data collection, man. You, if you have no data, just like what we do, what, what you do, and we want to see our audience and have our audience be happy, right? We have to know the data. If you don't know the fucking data, then how do you do social dynamics? How do you retain a stripper? How do you do any of it? You must collect data. So a lot of it that got me numbed out to game and to not being intimidated, we can talk about intimidation factor now. A lot of guys, right, that are going to watch this video are intimidated by strippers. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, I teach, I have a whole separate video I'll probably link to at the end where I go over a stripper game. And like, the big thing is not to be I call I use the term like starstruck because I think that like really encompasses like how a, how a typical customer is acting. He's just kind of like like jaw to the floor, like can't stop staring, like looking at their fucking tits. We were talking about this the other day how like a lot of chicks are like waiting for you to look at their fucking nice titties or their or their ass or some shit. And when you're like maintaining eye contact and you're not like phased by, you know, it's but I mean it's like a rite of passage though. Like the first I, I always tell guys in my videos like the first like nines that I banged or the first nines that I hung out with. I was like fucking terrified. I was like, I don't want to lose this nine and go back to sevens. I don't want to fuck up. Like, what is she thinking of me? What, you know, am I, am I doing well enough? Did I, should I say this next thing? Did I fuck the vibe up? Like, I think, I think everyone has a moment in their social dynamics and pickup career where they have a life changing moment and it lets them know the keys to the rest of the success. For example, mine was I was in, I was in Hollywood staying with a friend. Um, and he basically just tells me two girls are coming over, made it no big deal. So I said, man, these girls are probably like fours and fives just coming to smoke weed and hang out. And I didn't even bother to take a shower or do anything <laughs> other than put on like a dirty white t-shirt and <laughs> where I had like, like the dick imprint going on. You know what I mean? That's like the uh, imprint, it's the banana. Uh, the thing. So the chicks pull up in a 458 Ferrari and I'm thinking, I'm like, who the fuck did he call over? Because my friend, he's like a owner. So you know how they, they, nothing's a big deal ever. <laughs> like, world exploded like shit. It's dope. 
You know, like it's just nothing. Nothing's a big deal. There's no free gaming. So they blew up, and one of them was a very famous uh, reality star slash model in Hollywood that I had wanted for a long time. I had no idea she was coming in. I'm looking like literally the trashiest I've ever looked in my life. Like disgusting, no shower. Like I might have even had like the pit, the pit stains going on, you know, and all that. And what ended up happening was, I guess because I did that, just didn't have the opportunity to give a fuck. Whereas traditionally I would have gotten ready, right? I would have like done this whole thing. I didn't do any of that. And like, she totally fell in love with me and like, it was one of the best experiences. I can't believe it. I had sex the same day, it was bomb. I'm like, wow. And it just, it, that was my life changing moment. I said, you know what? If you know enough about social dynamics and game and psychology. Oh yeah. Things, what actually makes girls work, it's only what you want to do. There's, like, a, there, was, there's, a, there's this running joke a bunch of my close friends have with me where, where a bunch of my apartments, I wasn't even doing it on purpose. I, just, I was just being a fucking lazy. Never, the moments are never on purpose. No, I, no but I mean, like, I was letting like fucking beer cans and pizza boxes pile up and, you know, just having, in one of my, one of my apartments, I had like, tr like fucking garbage all over the, the bedroom floor and stuff. And I was railing these super hot chicks and my friends were like, how, how does it not like completely turn them off? Like, how do they not just fucking leave? I'm like, I own it. Like they come in and they'll, they'll be like, really? And I'll be like, yeah, like I really don't give a shit. You know, and I'm not like advocating that you guys should like live in trash. It wasn't like that bad, but it was like, obviously like not acceptable. But yeah, it's, it's, that's the thing. Like a lot of these guys, like when they go out to the clubs and stuff, they're like, oh, I got to wear a blazer. And like, I got to have like all this nice shit. And I'm like, no, I'm going to wear jeans and the button down like every single time. Cause that part doesn't fucking matter to me. And, like, a lot of these things that guys are placing emphasis on, like, they're trying to win the girl over by, like, using these external things instead of letting it all der derive from the mindset, like, I'm going to get this chick no matter what. That, that's how I think, uh, Chris was asking the other day, but I think the secret, I mean, and one of my secrets is the reason I get so many of these high-end uh, stripper, adult entertainer type is just because my genetic code of what I'm naturally into that I don't do for women just happens to align with them. Yeah. Like I like expensive shit. I like really intricate boutique. It's like expensive shit and like hobbies I have of like just luxurious shit that has nothing to do with girls. Just shit that I do. Like I've had girls get down to the details where they're going to my bathroom and they're like, "Oh shit, that's a five hundred dollar bottle of like cologne." Like they know what it is. I didn't get it for them. It's just my shit. So it happens to align when we align like that. But if you just fucking honestly, a lot of games and social dynamics, even with strippers, when a stripper knows you're being yourself. That's a major key for you guys to take away from this video. When you're when you're putting on an act or a show for a stripper, they immediately pick it out because they're very socially in tune with dealing with hundreds and hundreds of men a week. The numbers game. So when you actually are just yourself and you're your true inner person, they can recognize that. They'll respect you a lot more than if you try to put on an act. If you try to put on an act, it's not going to work. Yep. It will not work. Did you have any... Closing thoughts. We want we want for a pretty long time. Um, I I wanted to go into my whole my whole stripper game, but that's I have a whole separate video on it, so I'll just link it in the description. And I'll link it at the end here, or I think I my say, editor can put it up in the corner up here. The stri stripper game info card. I would what? say um, there's a lot more to talk about this, but I would say closing closing thoughts just for this video. If you guys are out there and want to date a stripper. And you, that's your goal. That, that was my goal for a long time. I thought this is the ultimate thing you could do as an as a alpha male. Just learn first and don't be afraid to fail. And sometimes even you might want to start at a smaller strip club. So back to the whole 11 thing. We're naming strip clubs in this video, guys, that are um, some of the most popular in America. I mean, you know, 11 is right up there with the top 10 strip clubs in the United States. So Spearman Rhino. Yeah, so right. If you guys may want to start in your local, like, let's say you live in, like, some suburb of Michigan or some shit like that, you may want to start in your local strip club and just get calibrated to these girls as a whole species. And you, yeah. Start to kind of aim at Las Vegas or aim at you, Miami. You can, you can go from different directions. Like, like you go, you meet them mostly outside the club and through, like, so, like social circles and through status and, and stuff like that. I, I do it, like, the fucking, uh, the old school cold approach way where I just roll into the strip club. A bunch of times even solo because a lot of people are like my guy friends are always like in whatever city i'm in everyone's the whole stereotype is oh why would i go and pay girls to pretend to like me but 
when you know how to snap out of that customer frame and you can present yourself as a cool dude who's on the inside, like the industry, like you get it, all this, you know, all these fucking things that I talk about in the stripper game video, um, then you can like straight up cold approach game them and then arrange to hang out with them at a, at a later time. That, that's the way I usually do it. Yeah, I would say that that's a really good tip. Also, um, going there under the impression that, you know, every battle is won before it's ever fought. So Sun Tzu. There, yeah, Art of War. When you go there, you know, you have to know your enemy to defeat it. I hope this video <laughs> lets guys know some of the inner game, inner workings that people A, don't know, and B, are afraid to talk about. As far as how strippers work, I feel, I would say 98% of people don't actually know. Dude. As much as I'm saying. Why don't we as a follow-up just get some fucking stripper on a, on a, like a part two of this, that either on your end or my end, and, and if she doesn't want her face on here, we can blur the face, but she can just give all her direct. All, all my strippers love being on camera. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would say, yeah, on our part two, let's each bring one of our favorite strippers. And let's let them explain how they got to the career, what makes them like you. And I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna prompt them at all. I'm gonna let them. I like them to go raw because it only helps me learn, you know. So I'm not gonna prompt it out. I'm I like, I like to go raw with them. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Uh, how much does it suck? Like, there's nothing worse and more disrespectful than if a stripper asked me to put on a condom. I would be like, wait a second. <laughs> That could be that could that could be another tagline for the intro too. There's nothing more disrespectful than if a stripper asked me to put it on a condom with the glasses lift. <laughs> I mean seriously, it's like if, if we're really messing with each other on this kind of a level, <laughs> you're asking me to strap up. Like I feel like we're back at the strip club again. It's just like a subconscious thing. Like I, I want to feel like I'm being intimate with it. I yeah. mean. get you into this weird animalistic side where like I, I, like I want them so bad that when I'm having sex with them I want them more than the sex so I'm like what do I do? <laughs> so fucking, I just fucking bust loads in them I don't even care what happens I'm totally just like fuck it you gotta get the vasectomy then you don't need to worry right you, I just I'm just, like I, I want their whole soul I'm like, this, 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 I'm like these girls don't come around enough man seriously girls <laughs> girls of the species are so fucking lame like when when you see a stripper and these girls are adults and Yeah, the, strip, the strippers are fucking just owning it. Yeah, the, the girls that work at the, you know, the Wells Fargo Bank, they fucking spreading disease. They, 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 fuck, guys, <laughs> they fuck guys. What? <laughs> Why do you keep bringing up Wells Fargo? Is that is that a is that a fucking gold mine I'm missing out on? I, I had I had this manager that I used to have sex with Wells Fargo Bank. <laughs> now, she'd be like totally normal and shit. She was a fucking drug addict, alcoholic, psychopath. <laughs> No, it's. No, I think it's. I think it's good because those tricks are gonna like still give you all the fake attention. Then you're gonna have yeah, to still. They'll give you a couple of shit tests for sure. You have you have to still battle through the fake attention, and if they can start getting number closes at Hooters, they're ready for the strip club. You know what I think too would be cool. I think we should do another video too on how to initially establish posture on their opening set of shit tests because they all do them and I think guys can fumble in the initial shit test phase. Yeah. I, I talk about in my stripper game thing is that you should be leading the conversation and you don't let them execute their, their canned scripts. So I typically they'll sit down and be like, hey handsome, like what's your name? And I usually look at them and I'm like, who gives a fuck? And that like snaps out because no, every dude's just like falling into the programming like, oh thank you, like I'm Bill. And then, oh, Bill, where are you from? You know, and she's just going through the fucking motions. She's like, all right, another fucking loser. But if you look at her and you're like, who gives a shit? Or you're like, you just, you know, you just fucking own the, the situation. Then they're like, whoa, this dude, this it, is like a rare alpha dude. It's shit, it's shit tests on the ultimate level. So I don't suggest uh, strippers do 
difficult game for guys who are getting, because like on my last video, I think I went a little bit too complex with this, so I want to go more simple. Um, I think guys who are initially starting to learn game and social dynamics don't start with any of this stuff because you need the baseline. Because this is this is shit test that even a girl who worked at fucking Wells Fargo would do to you, but they're the ultimate shit test because they require more sub-psychology. So I would suggest this later on after you baseline with, you know, just your regular four, three or four, who just gives you a shit test like, all of you want to go to dinner right now or something stupid. Because if, if not, it's like, you, you have to drive the Honda before you drive the Ferrari. Yeah. Yeah. Rules of the road. Yeah, I mean, my, my strip club game video though will be really helpful. I've traditionally taught those principles like when I have a seven day program in the past and the guys almost always fuck at least one stripper. It's usually, it's usually you're going to meet them at a later time. Like it's, it's usually not like you're waiting for them after the club just because they're, they're working for hours and hours. So normally you get the number and then you meet up at a later time. But usually on those programs when the guys follow the, the checklist stuff that's in that strip club game plan that I, I talk about, they usually end up banging one of the chicks. Another cool thing is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a secret. Like if I could do anything besides what I'm doing now and having money, if I just, none of that mattered. You want to run I'd a strip club? No, I, I'd be a male stripper like Magic Mike. Or I just didn't care <laughs> about anything. And all I would do all day is just have sex with chicks and just kind of like, that's it. And just be in the best shape of my life. But, but, the, but the thing is, you have to remember, and I'm telling you, like, I get so into having, I get into having sex with strippers on such another level that I feel like I'm like making love to them. It's not even sex, like I feel like I'm like, that's it. I'm fucking, I'm going to make this, like literally make this chick just absolutely fall in love with me right now. All this shit's going out the window. It's like my, my like, it's a sense of like goal and accomplishment. I'm like, no more. I'm like, I'm gonna just fucking change. I'm gonna rewire her brain in this sleepover session. She's gonna leave here differently. So yeah. we're gonna continue. And that's her ultimate retention of like wanting to marry one of them. Because it, dude, I'm talking about <laughs> well, when me and you go to Toronto, yeah. just wait. You, oh yeah, the strip clubs there are dope. I've, yeah, I've been to them. The, the strippers are dope. Yeah. The strippers are like, it, there's something about a stripper because, you know, you have to encounter one more thing here before we, we wrap it up. Strippers are held to a different standard than a normal girl. A normal girl at Wells Fargo Bank. I mean, <laughs> you know, like Watch well, us get like fucking sued. <laughs> They're like, you're, you're implying our institution is a bunch of whores. Dude, I might have to go check out a Wells Fargo. Oh, I'm in Poland. They don't even have that shit here. <laughs> I bank with Bank of America in the States, so I've been missing out. are not into chicks as much as the strippers are they're not into as much freaky shit as much dressing up yeah yeah just right. fucking just fucking rolling with the punches going with the flow like all these things that are just that just makes makes chicks cool but then you have that like little broken like mania hiding that comes out one day and it just blows the whole thing usually <laughs> I'm gonna tell you one of my most fun things to do, like one of my gratifications 
in life is just like where I find the ultimate levels of life. Like how cool is it when you go to like In and Out with like a really hot stripper and it's totally organic, and then you just come <laughs> home and you have sex. Like, for, the, like, for, the, for those of you watching, because there's people that watch this all around the world. There, there's fucking uh, that's a that's a burger place in the in the West U.S. It sounds. You ever watch Clockwork Orange? When he's like, when he's like, I gave her the old in out, in out. <laughs> you're like, when you got the stripper and you're going in out. <laughs> like, like, it's, it's, the, it's the best, uh, what would you call it, fast food burger chain. Yeah, it's good. Uh, California, but like, every other guy is losing at that moment in, in my mind. I'm like, I'm with this chick, I just spent like 10 bucks. Yeah. We're having like, some dope ass food, are probably high, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna have the best sex, and then we're gonna just watch movies and smoke weed and talk about life and shit, yeah. and then I'm gonna use the reward system the next day for sure. The next day I'm gonna be like, see what I like to do is I like to hit him with a hat trick because they've rewarded me so much. It's only like I want to feel right about it. I feel good about spending money after they've already spent money on me. A lot of them just start spending money on me just. I don't know if it's like to even us out type of thing or them to let like let me know that they're not a broke ass bitch. So <laughs> after that happens, I'm like, hey, you want to go to like a restaurant or whatever after three, four times of hanging out? And then like they get all dressed, they, they get all dressed up and they <clears throat> really appreciate that shit. Yeah. Way more than like a regular girl that you would take to dinner. They don't give a fuck about it. <laughs> but a stripper should be like, oh my God, it was so fun. And they're just, they're great creatures, you know? <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it. We went, we went pretty long. A lot of good shit here, though. Um, let's let's shout out our. Uh, or actually, click the like. You can do it too. Maybe I don't know whose side it's on. <laughs> click the like and subscribe. Uh, make sure you click the bell button so you get notified of all the new videos coming up. Um, we're gonna be doing these regularly. We got a lot of cool topics in the pipeline. We, both of us bring a lot of raw, real shit to these conversations. That's why this is a good podcast series. We can make audio versions too and fucking throw these into podcasts. Yeah, and the cool. people listen in their car and shit. And, and guys, remember, uh, you always want to learn the fundamentals. That is like really important. That I didn't discuss it all in the last podcast that we did. Learn the fundamentals of game. Learn the fundamentals of the basics, like John tells you about. Shit that I had to learn, but just it's in the back of my mind, not in the front, about taking a shower, grooming yourself. Because in order to get to all these things that we're talking about, the, the, the basics have to be really rock solid. No. So don't don't expect to use this shit when you don't, you know, when you when you go from step two to step seven, it's not going to work. You need to really go through the basics and learn all the fundamentals, and then you can graduate into getting the girls you actually want, which. I feel like if I did a poll and asked probably a hundred thousand guys that if I just went out and looked at what they really wanted as a kid, that a stripper is <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's just like having it's just like having whatever car you you always wanted a Ferrari, you always wanted whatever whatever you do that thing is, that's what the stripper is. It's what you always really wanted internally but just kinda of wrote off because one of your family members is too traditional, you don't think you can do it, uh Socially unacceptable, all these things that have gone away. So, always remember that, guys. You, you, you can do it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. It's been fun. Uh, look out for the next podcast, guys. What do you want? What do you want to do these every couple weeks or something? At least. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep look out for these. Put in the comments uh, other topics that you want us to get into. Make sure they're kind of like raw, like real type of shit. We don't really want to go over any kind of like you know, basic, real basic one-on-one -on -one type stuff. We're, we're drawing off a lot of life experience with some of these rare... If you guys, if you guys want to add in comments about, um, that we could do also about how to integrate uh, your lead with business and how to leverage yourself using, if you are in business and you want to use that as some of your baseline structure and your initial set, you guys can comment that below as well. I think a, a lot of times guys have a hard time shifting and not overly talking about being in business. I have 20, over 20 revenue streams and when I'm dealing with my leads as females, I think I might bring it up maybe once in six months. Something to think about for sure. Nice. Cool. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment, and we will see you on the next one. Take care, guys.